green, go white. Woof, woof. Michigan State, 81. Alcorn, 49. Uh, good performance. All around really good performance from Michigan State. And like I've been trying to say for weeks, all it took for this team to finally play well was removing Tyson Walker. It all made sense. Carter, how are you feeling tonight? I mean, I'm feeling good. I mean, it, it was it was a fun game. Like, it was a lot of fun. We got guys getting on transition. You got Trey Holloman in his first career start going five for five from three. Like, what is what is life with a career high 17 points? Just like, uh, just, you know, just, just a fun game. I, I really don't have many, like, takeaways necessarily, necessarily any breakdowns of it. It's kind of hard to do. Uh, as I do with every Michigan State breakdown, I just want to make it very unequivocally clear how bad Alcorn State is. Like they're they're really bad, right, Gregory? You, you don't have any qualms about that. <laughs> do you want me to have some qualms about that, or, or I just want you to reassure me that they are that bad. Uh they're not as bad as they look tonight. They're not like this was an impressive win. Really, they're not. They're not good. They're they're in the two hundreds on Ken Palm, though. They're yeah. not three hundred and up. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I mean, I guess I guess I'll take that, but um. Yeah, I mean, tonight, able to get some shots to fall, shoot 40% from three, 52% from the field. Um, you know, and the one negative, I guess, I I think we – and that's honestly the main thing I want to talk about in this recap is it still seems that we're getting struggle A.J. Hogard from my position. I, okay. <laughs> You just, I love you, man. I truly love you because, like, you're just the biggest Spartan fan I know through and through. You got all this passion. And then when things finally go well for your team, you're like, all I want to talk about is the negative, the only negative from the game. Everybody looks great. I had that written. I have notes here. I had one note that was literally the final note. If we have time, go to it. If not, just skip it. And I was going to ask you, did anybody play bad tonight? And see if you answered. And instead, you're like, that's all I want to talk sorry, about. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're right. No, we should we should talk about some good. You're right. My apologies. Uh, well, I mean, you, you're the Michigan State fan. Do you want to go right into the bad? We can do this how you want to. Well, I mean, I think the good should be very, very short and sweet for me. I mean, I, I liked what I saw from Cohen Carr. I like what I saw from Trey Holloman, obviously. Um, and to be honest with you, I I truly think that tonight you kind of like you got to give Trey Holloman a chance. I feel like to be, I mean, with the way this team goes and the way this team has been knocking down shots lately, it might be like a ride the hot hand situation. So to me, when we get to the Arizona game, Trey Holloman might might you know bleep, bleep, bleep us over by going like zero for four from three or zero for three from three. But by having this performance and having the confidence to knock down these shots. I feel like he should be in a position to do so. And so he should be given that opportunity in the next upcoming games. Jay Nakins goes three for six from three. That was good to see. 11 shot attempts by him was also good to see. Uh, my favorite stat of the night, Xavier Booker went one for six from three. I don't care anything about that one. The six attempts <laughs> look great. I appreciate him doing that. He also played 19 minutes in this game, Gregory, which was more than Carson Cooper, more than Malik Hall, and more than Mati Sissoko. If anyone's keeping count, just want to throw that out there. So, huh, huh. Uh, you know, it it, it 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 was good to see. I think coming into the game, I was like, I want to see the young guys play. I want to cover. I want to play well. I want to see some shots going for some guys. All that happened. So, all in all, everyone across Spartan Nation should be very happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was all around good performance. Um, to, to harp on the Trey Holloman stuff, we have criticized him endlessly on this program. I have criticized him endlessly on and off of this program. I've said he's a bench guard. I've said it's okay that he's a bench guard. It, you don't need to ask him to be more than that. If he ever is anything more than that, great. But it's perfectly okay for him to not be a rotation guy. Uh I, I, you got to give the kid credit, right? Like it, he hit a bunch of threes, but it wasn't just hitting threes. He had five assists tonight. He threw the one off the backboard to Jeremy fears, which uh, I mean, that's just, it's fun. It's exciting, obviously, but also like you got to be confident in yourself to pull some shit like that with Tom Izzo as your coach in a blowout win, when you're trying to fight for a larger role in the rotation, like to do it and to execute it in style, I thought was really impressive. And it speaks to the confidence that he's playing with right now. It was really good. Um, yeah, it, it felt pretty out of body experiency to me with Trey, but I do think you got to give him more of a shot. Like he, he's got to stay in the rotation at minimum now. And um, the the nice thing to me was not 
that Holloman played well. It was that Holloman played well. And also Jeremy fears had his best game of his young career, nine points, five assists, four for five from the floor. He was attempting shots. Uh, he looked like he was aggressive and hunting offensively as opposed to just being out there and letting the game play itself. So to me, like this is the first time I felt like anybody on the team, except for Tyson Walker played and also like wasn't just the only guy that was hot that night it was like this guy played well but it didn't stop this guy from also playing well that was really good and you gotta remember man at the beginning of the year when when people fairly threw out the possibility that michigan state was the best backcourt in the country it wasn't because aj hogard and tyson walker as a duo was the best duo and it was never that it was truly never that it was always the depth they have at the guard position. It was always our third guard, Jade Nakins, is better than anybody else's third guard in the country. It was always our fourth guard, Jeremy Fears, is better than anybody else's fourth guard in the country. And if you even want to go further, tonight, our fifth guard, Trey Holloman, is better than anybody's fifth guard in the country. So I think, like, while everybody has been dogged for that take, and I've been laughing loudly at that take for months now, it's not a crazy take when you just remember the take was never AJ and Tyson. It was the depth of the backcourt position because Michigan State does have five guards that can play any given night. And uh, the, tr- the truth is the guy you want to talk about for being bad is lowering on the rankings every second as these games go by. Like Trey is coming for AJ Hogarth's minutes right now. Like it could happen. Jeremy, if Jeremy Fierce keeps playing like this, he's going to cut into AJ Hogarth's minutes. And uh, I think that bodes well for you guys as a team. Yeah. And hopefully like it, it, it is seen as like a healthy competition thing too, because I've talked about it previously with Michigan state. I think one of the issues with AJ Hogarth, and it's not really his fault at all, but like he has not been pushed. I don't think his whole Michigan state career, like foster lawyer was the point guard that like, that he's not going to push him. Rocket got hurt. Like, he's not going to push him. There was really no one to push this guy. And this year, I think that there are guys that are getting more comfortable as they get more minutes. Jeremy Fears is getting comfortable. Trey Holloman's had taken advantage of his opportunity. So, you know, though AJ has been here for so long and had the keys to the team, if you're not going to step up and play well and play up to your ability, you know, Coach Izzo is going to have to make that tough decision and maybe – not necessarily just cut them out, but I think as you go along this year, you're going to see the minutes of the other guards on this team get closer and closer to AJ's. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it's not going to be AJ playing 30 plus minutes. I think those minutes are going to be cut into a little bit because of the play of the other guys on this team. And will that be good? I, I think so, because you want the young guys to play good, but also it'd be nicer if like AJ played to his ability. Cause I still think up to this point of the season, he has yet to play up to his ability. And I don't even count the Butler game as that, to be honest with you. Cause I feel like he got a lot of garbage buckets in that time. You came on here the last time we talked and you went back and forth with me on if Jade Nakins has gotten any better. I said, we don't know. I wouldn't say he hasn't. You were more definitive in saying, I don't think he's gotten better. Tonight, 13 points, five rebounds, three assists. He was in a more natural kind of two guard on the ball a little bit more. I know Holloman was too, but just with Tyson Walker out of the game, Jade Nakins, I thought was more involved, especially early in half court situations than he's ever been in a Michigan state uniform. I thought he looked okay. I wouldn't say he looked good or great. I thought he looked okay. I thought he looked better than he has when he's playing more off the ball. What did you see from Jade Nakins tonight? Yeah, I, I, I still didn't really see much, to be honest with you. I thought he still had trouble, like, getting by people. He still had trouble uh, maybe getting all the way to the basket. Um, I You know, I just don't know. Maybe it's a reps thing, like you said. Like, he needs more reps in the half court. He needs more reps in this situation to truly kind of unlock what he can do. But at the same time, I'm still a little bit, uh, reluctant to go ahead and say like, yeah, Jaden should be in that role. He should be doing that because uh, there was a, plenty of opportunities tonight where I feel like he struggled to get by his guy. He had some turnovers as well when he tried to dribble. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you got to look to like, he's doing what we need him to do. If he's going to shoot three for six from three, he's going to grab five rebounds and dish out three assists. Like we'll, you know, in, in 24 minutes, we'll take that. Kind of just a, he is who he is and let's embrace that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's let's not force him to be what he's not. Let's embrace what he is. Yeah, let's 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 stop like just 
he and you, you might like people might be right like he might be better at it but like it, it is what it is right now let's just embrace what he is he's on our team this is his role uh stop looking at the what could or what he could be it's just like let's just let's just accept this one yeah i think it's the chicken or the egg it's like what what comes first right is it is it jay nakins hasn't improved because he's in the same role or is it that he's in that role because he hasn't improved we don't really know uh the bottom line is i will Verbally right now, I will formally commit to not raising any Jaden Aikens role conversations for the rest of the year. I am willing to accept him as he is what he is and discuss his game within the lens of he is what he is. I am not willing to do that. <laughs> okay, understood. Mm. Uh, all right, you ready for a, a take? Please. Actually, let me ask you this before I give you a take. 40% from three. First time this season, Michigan State has crossed that line, 10 for 25 that's a huge step in the right direction you feeling better about michigan state's shooting after tonight uh no not really that was my take that was my take too i'm surprised you say no not really because i think most other fans would be like we shot 40 percent. we're fine we're back i love what trey Hallman did tonight i truly do it was great he played great tonight credit to him he ain't going five for five that's not happening yeah, probably not. Probably not. Um, so here's – people are going to say I'm cutting up the numbers. Shout out Discord. Shout out Ethan Basilla. He's going to hear this and uh, hashtag analysis. Here's here's where we're at. Trey Holloman was great. He shot the ball fantastic. It, maybe he will continue to do so. Who knows? I've lumped him in with the non-shooters all season. Maybe he will. Outside of Jade Nakins and Trey Holloman tonight, the rest of the team was two for 14 from three. It's it's always been, do the other guys make threes or not? Tonight, one of them did. None of the others did. Well, so, <laughs> well okay, but at the same time, if, can, if we cut that out, can we cut some other threes out here? You want to cut Xavier Booker's out? No, I want to cut. Oh, Nick the Sanders. end of bench guys? The end of bench Yeah, guys. like, let's cut Sanders. Yeah, that's fair. Cut, I, 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 oh, is that, is that – oh, Fear's got one up tonight? I missed that one. So it'd be, it, it'd, be, it'd be two for 12 then if you if you cut the, the end of bench guys out. Okay, so, yeah, so not even – not even that, but that's uh, the the point is like I I think you need more than one of the guys in the group, right? It's you know Aikens and Tyson are what they are; they're great shooters. And if mm-hmm. Trey Hall, if Trey Holloman emerges as a forty percent shooter, then this is all dead. But then that means Trey Holloman has to be on the floor a ton. Yeah. Like if if Trey is that good of a shooter, Trey has to be on the floor with Aikens and Walker together, and and that's clunky, right? But to yeah. me, the larger thing is like, okay, Malik Hall, 0 for 2 in 17 minutes. Xavier Booker, we love him. We want him to shoot, but 1 for 6 tonight. Uh, and Fears 0 for 1. Okay, that's fine. But uh, to me, I, I feel like shooting is still kind of the thing. And then you look at what they shot from free throw card. It was bad, 52%, 21 attempts tonight. So yeah. I think it's a team-wide issue that it even – it's great they hit 40%. It's great that Trey Holloman threw them on his back and had out-of-body experience. I just – I think as a team, the concerns are still very loudly there. And uh, that was even tonight while Trey Holloman was making everything he shot. Tim Hardaway Jr. All Star Game style. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I say one more one more thing here? Yeah. You know how I've been coming on these on these clips and episodes, being like, "Play Xavier Booker, play Xavier Booker." Like mm-hmm. Xavier Booker needs a chance. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but I'm gonna give you mine. Xavier Booker played 19 minutes tonight. Two for eight from the three, one for six from the field. Honestly, that's fine. To me, at least he's like not out there just floating. But at the same time, in those 19 minutes on the floor, nothing occurred to me where it's like that man needs to play more or that man needs to be on the floor. To be honest with you, I thought that he was he looked lost at times. Um, his shot selection, though, he had some good threes that he could take. Some of them were a little bit weird. He fades on his jump, he fades on his jump hook, even though the defender's smaller than him. Like I he's really he's got some he has the talent, I think, for sure, but he might be a lot more raw than I thought. And I, I know that you kind of brought the point, like, did Xavier Booker make the wrong choice by going to Michigan State? I'm starting to think, like, I don't know if Xavier Booker's going anywhere else and really playing that much and being, like, extremely productive yeah. with the way, with the with what I've seen. I disagree with that. Maybe Maybe the last point on being extremely productive I can agree with, but, like, he would he would go places that would let him play through. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah okay yeah I got I got, I got you okay yeah, I, I'll, yeah I'll meet you on that I'll meet you yeah I agree play more but like like imagine if imagine if he was on Louisville instead of Dennis Evans like he's yeah, he's okay. playing thirty five minutes and 
averaging a double double and he's a guaranteed first round pick no matter how bad Louisville is. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that that's sort of where I'm. And there's there's middle ground between go to Michigan State or go to Louisville. And uh, again, I like maybe the kid wants to win a national championship. Thought Michigan State was the best place. I'm not here to criticize a kid's motivation for why he chose Michigan State. I am here to say I think as a result, if he doesn't play, he's going to rob himself of opportunities if he's not playing over my Sissoko. So it was really good tonight that he did get those opportunities. But I am with you. I was not impressed with him. Look, there's. There's a lot in the Xavier Booker conversation. He's not a polished product at all. He's not going to be, at least not for the next month. And I don't think he'll get there without playing and going through some of these growing pains. So I give Izzo credit for playing him 19 minutes in a game like this, where you know it's in hand. And it, he, you just need to see what he looks like. Tonight, he didn't look great. I will say, I think just his presence alone opened things up for other guys. Like the fact that there's a guy who will shoot six threes in the game, in mm -hmm. the front court. That opens things up for the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. And I think that matters even if those threes aren't going in. Um, I thought he was okay on the boards. I didn't think he was horrible. He had one block. Like, to me, he's not he's not as far behind the other centers as anyone would like you to think on the coaching staff. But that says more about the other centers than it does about where Xavier Booker is. And uh, speaking of the other centers, they made the big flip. Carson Cooper in the starting lineup. Booker off the bench. That was before the Duke game. Everybody freaked out about it. Ooh, ooh, wee, great move. Carson Cooper looks great. Madi's horrible. Madi had a more productive game tonight. <laughs> what, what did you see? From, I thought my Sogo was better than Carson Cooper tonight. Well, yeah, Carson Cooper can stop fouling for one, so that 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 definitely has something to do with it. Honestly, I think it's just it it doesn't matter to me necessarily if like Cooper's better than Madi. I just think this just like calms things down. Just having like. I know you, you people think like Izzo doesn't listen to like outside noise and fan bases and things like that. But truly, like this is a move where you're like, I mean, Madi played more than Carson Cooper tonight. Hey, that was fouls, though. That was no, fouls. But I'm just but I'm just saying, like, it takes the pressure off. People aren't just harping on how bad Madi is or what Madi is doing now that he's coming off the bench. And yeah. and Cooper can touch the free throw line on a on a hedge coverage. And people will be in the is on falling out over the bleachers. It just it it just works out. Yeah, honestly, if I'm Tom Izzo and I know for a fact that my centers are going to give me identically mediocre production every game, absolutely, you start the guy that MSU Twitter goes gaga over, and then you just you don't have to worry about it. You get the same production regardless. That's a really good point. Uh, but I I will say I think I think Madi's been good since the move to the bench. I think I like. Think so. I think we're seeing a, a better version of Madi since the move to the bench. And I think we're seeing the same version of Cooper. And in the end, you're getting about the same production. So, and I hope weird. other, and I hope other seniors take note of that. <laughs> uh, I can't believe we've made it this long in this recap without addressing the duck Cohen Carr. Uh, we said preseason, there will be a moment where he does something where we just like, we don't believe it. We don't know what it was. Uh, I will say I, I didn't see this one live. This was like me getting a refill in my Moscow mule cup during this. And then I came back and had texts from everybody and I'm doing, I spent about 30 seconds refreshing Twitter. Like who's going to be the first person to send me a video of this? What is it? And then I see the big 10 network video from their official Twitter account. I watch it. It's obviously crazy. I will say based on the reactions, wasn't as wild as I thought, like the 30 seconds in my head, where I'm envisioning what Cohen Carr just did based on Peach's reaction and your reaction, all these people. I thought like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I thought. I thought it was more than this. Big 10 clip was bad. Did you see the other clip? No, I have not seen the other clip. Okay. Big 10 clip showed it when he like already like dunked the ball, basically. Yeah. It was like, a, it was right into him on top. Yeah. Of him. No, yeah. no, no, no. I'll, I'll send you full clip. Okay. Send me the full clip. Um, I mean, yeah, just a freak. We we know he's capable of doing this any given moment, and that alone is enough to watch Michigan State every night and be excited about it because this kid's just a special, special athlete. Yeah, well, first of all, address it the way it needs to be addressed. He didn't dunk. What do you do, Greg? You mm -hmm. got to say your term. Uh, uh, donkey dunk? Yeah, what, what's Colin Carr do? Just a little donkey dunk? Well, a little, dunk, a little donkey dunk. He, he did his little donkey dunk. Yeah, did he do oh, he anything? Did, he, else? Did, he did a couple little donkey dunks. Did he do anything else besides his donkey dunks? <laughs> no, he, he was he was five for six on donkey dunks. Okay, he had a lot of good donkey dunks tonight. We love that. We love that. Just let it be, let it be known. There's nothing wrong with donkey dunks, man. Like Brandon Dawson, one of the best in the world. By the way, get 
be careful around him these days. I'm just saying, but man. Do not spit on Brandon Dawson. <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah. Are we sure? Come on. Well, that's, I mean, that's what that's he the said. Story he got well, spat on. That's what he said. And then he's, and then I saw the clip and it was kind of like, you remember when, uh, when Rondo and Chris Paul fought? Yeah. Like, I could kind of, like, the video is obviously awful because it's taken off of probably a ninth generation phone in some Dominican basketball league. So, like, you can't really see. But the guy did, like, turn to him. And I thought originally he just said something. But there might be some spit involved. Okay. We'll run with spit. That's the narrative, I guess. Don't don't spit on Brandon Dawson. I mean, you might as well. He's not going to knock you out. I'm pretty disappointed <laughs> you sucker punch a guy. You don't knock him out. That that that's a bad be. look. That's, that's that's not the Draymond standard. That was the worst. That was the worst of all. Hey, listen, man. Outrage when Jawan Howard fake slaps somebody. <laughs> Sorry, I got I got I got I got Twitter discourse coming at me right now with Alcorn oh. State takes. Mm, nice, love it. Where so what? Where, where were we going with Donkey Dunks with Cohen? Anything else on Cohen? I mean. Well, actually, let's let's start a new Cohen Carr segment. Every time he posters someone, uh, like Olympic style gymnastics, judge me, one to ten. You get you get to give a one to ten score on that Cohen Carr dunk tonight. What are you giving Cohen Carr's dunk? See, I see. I feel like I'm I'm judging I'm I'm judging Simone Biles right now as far as mm-hmm. gymnast wise. I got I gotta I gotta hold strong on this. I'll give him a eight point. Four because he dunked on Alcorn State. That felt good to me too. I go eight two. I'm gonna notoriously be the Russian judge here, but uh, that that was an eight two to me. Very good dunk. Um, I expect we will see larger and greater and more exciting dunks from Cohen Carr this year. More exciting donkey dunks. More exciting donkey dunks. You really like the donkey dunks? I kind of do. <laughs> I mean, man's man's got some good donkey dunks. Uh, <laughs> oh man! To summarize all of this for me, man. Y'all got your swagger back. It's good to see. I, I speak for, I think, the whole Michigan State program. Y'all got your swagger back. I think it's reinvigorated the fan base a little bit. You got a big test coming later this week, Arizona. We will have a preview on the Sleepers Media channel for that game. We will have a recap on the Sleepers Media channel for that game. But uh, you got your swagger back. I'm officially, like, looking at y'all again, like, hmm, kind of tough. Hmm. That that recap of that game might get dangerous depending on results. Is that on Thanksgiving, too? Yeah. So we're going to be like midnight on Thanksgiving from – well, I'll be home. I don't know where you'll be. but I I, I will be home. You, so we're going to – why are we both home on Thanksgiving this year? Well, I'm going to my parents' house and I'm coming back home. Goodness. <laughs> and and the Lions played that day. Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness. So I'm, going, I'm going Lions, Packers right into Michigan State, Arizona, right into probably recording with you. I'll make sure to have a fresh cocktail poured for that one. Yeah, uh, go green, go white. You want to give the people a woof woof? Good teams win, great teams cover, baby. It is what it is.